what is up guys this is pinzo back with another video today and what i have for you guys is a bit of a discussion video so i haven't done one of these in a while but i figured i would get one out just uh looking at the end of predecessor season one early access season one i figured i would get a you know sort of what i want to see in season two video right this is this going to be five things i want to see in season two of predecessor and uh yeah so the first season of predecessor for those of you who don't know ran from december 1st when the game launched into early access and it's going to end on uh like april 14th or something like that i don't know the exact date that would be uh or april april 18th maybe the 17th one of those days um is is when it will end so that's going to be like you know four months or so right december january february march and a little bit of april so a little bit over four months of this early access and then season two we're assuming is going to be roughly the same length so ending you know beginning of september kind of is where we're looking at and it's been it's been pretty good so far there are there are some things you know we'd like there have been some hiccups you know revenant was really op for a long time shinbi came out with like a couple of bugs supposedly that made her broken uh, but they they squashed both of those things pretty quick I, I, overall i'm barely happy with the way that omida has handled the the running of early access season one there are just a couple of things that I, I like I would love to see in the game. I'd love to see them do, you know, maybe a little bit better moving into season two. And that's what we're going to be going over today. So as always, if you guys go on to enjoy this content, be sure to leave it a like and a subscribe. If you guys, you know, if you have something to add, if you, uh, you know, think I'm wrong about something, you know, let me know down below. I, I'm curious what you guys, what the community thinks about this kind of thing as well. So let me know what you guys think down below. Getting into it. So number one. This one seems pretty obvious to me. Ranked. It's what everyone, everyone in this in this list, everyone watching this list knows that that was going to be on here. I'm just going to put it at the front and get it over with because there are a couple of things that you have to remember. I am one of the uh, biggest anti-ranked people that, that exist right now. I do not think that ranked should be in the game right now. I think that you need to see a massive influx of players before you can add ranked to the game, because otherwise, if you have a game that, you know, right now, Pred is peaking daily, at like 1,500 players, right? Not to mention what it's like when it's not peaking. Uh, but let's say you have 1,500 players, and even if uh, a third of those players want to play ranked, which in a MOBA this small, I'm assuming that's a very low estimate. My guess is more than half would be wanting to play ranked, right? But then what that does to the casual player is increases queue times, reduces matchmaking quality, and makes the game less fun, right? So you're going to lose players by, by adding ranked. Because the thing is also in ranked, when you have 800 players that are playing ranked, or even you know throughout a week, maybe you have uh, 2,000 players that are playing ranked. That's not enough players to stretch out the MMR far enough to so that when uh, you have, you have uh, 1,500 people active playing, and you know 700 of those are playing ranked but those 700 don't play you know it, it doesn't stretch out the mmr enough to make the games accurate so what you're going to have is you're going to have uh, a game where the average mmr is you know we'll, we'll use the you will use 2000 right and one person on a team is 2500 and the other four people are a thousand but then the entire enemy team is 2000 right so your 1000 mmr teammates they're having a bad time because they're getting shit on your 2500 MMR teammate is having a bad time because all of his teammates are getting shit on, even though he is better than the entire enemy team. And the enemy team, they're, you know, that they're having whatever. They're, they're just farming people, right? You know, that can be fun. Sometimes it's not as fun. Uh, but but the point of that is be is to say that the matchmaking wouldn't be good if they were to add ranked right now. Although, you know, maybe by the end of season two, I think, you know, if we start seeing an uptick in players, that's when you can look to add ranked. So ranked for me. Kind of an edge case because i think that i would love to see it obviously i want to play competitively so like i would i like i want ranked as much as you guys but at the same time you, you can't do it in a dumb way you can't put it in at the wrong time look at over prime and then tell me that ranked right now is a good decision right number two this is going into character design i want to see truly ability based characters in this game which currently don't exist. Whatever you think an ability-based character is in, in Predecessor, it is not. <laughs> if you think there is a truly ability-based character in this game, you are incorrect. Um, the closest, I will say, the closest that this game has to a truly ability-based character 
is Severog, okay? Because he has a spammable ability that is essentially an auto attack, right? Late game, you're not even really autoing on Severog. You're just pressing Q over and over again, which sort of becomes an auto attack. Uh, he's the closest, but I, I don't think that counts. I'm talking like, like a, a, a character like, I, of course, I'm going to bring up Smite because I'm a Smite player. You guys are probably seeing Smite gameplay in the background right now. Uh, but but the, like the first character I'm going to bring up is, you know, someone like Thor or Susano or uh, Sir Ket or something like that, where they do the vast majority of their damage from their abilities. Sometimes, you know, a lot of those characters have auto attack cancels where they are getting in auto attacks in between their abilities, but they are not, they're, they're not auto attackers. They are not holding mouse one to do all their damage, right? That, that's not how they work. It's not, they're not a carry, right? That is just sitting there and auto attacking. They are maybe weaving in auto attacks in their abilities like Fang Mao does, but Fang Mao, his abilities only do, his abilities do like 10 damage. They don't do anything. His E has a slow on it and he has a dash to keep up so that you can basically auto attack people, right? That's sort of how the kit works. Uh, and right now, I, I just don't like that. I don't like that, you know, basically every character in this game does the vast majority of their damage by holding mouse one. I think that's super boring. It makes all the characters feel very same E, which I, I don't like that very much. So I would like to see just a, a uh, maybe, maybe it's even just going bolder on character designs to make them less mouse one and more like do things with their abilities right I, I i think that's something that needs to be explored more and on top of that number three this is something kind of specific but this is a character design uh you know thing that i would like to see it might not make it in season two but this is something i want to see in pred eventually and that is using the three-dimensional map a little bit better and my number one thing that I would like to see with that 3D is a semi-global ultimate. So something like Thor ultimate, Thanatos ultimate, Ratatosker ultimate, something like that. Obviously, I don't know how those work in League. I know that there are uh, characters that can teleport in League, but I don't know if there are semi-globals like that in League. Uh, in Smite, those are characters that... In Smite, obviously, it's two-dimensional, right? But the, they're characters that you can basically go above the map and they can they can like pick a landing zone right and most of these characters are like it's a dunk right so you it'd be like steel ultimate if he could if he could hold in the air and then choose where to dunk so you kind of jump above the map and then you can choose and then you dunk down on them so you guys are probably seeing a couple examples on screen right now and it's just something that i i think with the way the map is three-dimensional it's something that could work really well right we're not talking old kalari ultimate because that was broken right I, i'm not talking instant teleport to an enemy right that that's dumb I, I don't like that but the idea of you know being able to get above the map and being able to you know uh crash down on someone like a true gank right right now the only like they have fog walls so you can get close to people in gank but uh the only way to gank is basically to to walk into walk into a lane right there's not really another way around it you you just walk into a lane uh someone with a semi-global you know a thor a thanatos they fly into a lane <laughs> which is which is different right it, it makes it so you have to look up which uses the 3d the three-dimensional part uh you have to be able to react to maybe a sound cue of someone dunking on you right it'd be like uh i don't know exactly what you're reacting to in this game you can you can react to steel ultimate because you see it on the ground right so you see it on the ground and then you have to blink like if you never saw a steel he, he dunks you from a fog wall Right, you have to react, and that's something that could happen if you have these people that can get above the map. That's just something that I think is a really cool character design. It's a really cool ultimate idea. I'd like to see them play around with that, and you know, beyond that, just play around with people like being able to get up. Like Howitzer's ultimate, I think, is a good good beginning example where he can use that three dimensional as safety. He can use it as an like his ultimate gives him safety, but it also does damage. Uh, it's this cool like. It's this cool thing that is in the game that I just don't think is explored quite enough. Number four. This is going to be a little bit balance oriented, but again, this is going to be, I'm going to be mostly trying to focus on the like sort of design aspect of this. All right. This is talking about tanks. For those of you that play Pred, like, you know, on a, on a daily, weekly basis, you know that right now, tanks pretty much suck. They're pretty bad, right? They, they just get shredded. They're not tanky. Uh, the only tank that's like worth a damn is Severog because he has 5,000 health. It's not because of building a bunch of defense items, really, like realistically speaking. It's because he has 5,000 health, right? And that's a, that's a lot of health to shred through. Like right now, Raiment of Renewal is the best, is the is technically speaking, 
the tankiest first item like literally the math the math says that's the tankiest first item because it has 600 health on it and that's a lot of health uh and the defense in the game doesn't do enough so when you have five items right in in smite and league you have six item slots in this game you have five and the crests don't really count because the stats they give aren't aren't very good right you, you you get a crest for the active not the stats so uh you have five you have five items and the issue with the game at this exact moment is that in those five items carries are getting as much stats as they would out of six items in another moba right that's just kind of carry items are a little bloated they give too much stuff on every item so that you end up getting essentially a free extra item by the end of your build uh the issue is that tank items are actually balanced for five items <laughs> right right Be believe it or not the the issue is that tank items are balanced i think and that carry items are bloated uh which makes tank items feel really weak because you have tank items you know the most defense you can get on a tank item is like 70 defense which is a lot right but there's not multiple items with 70 so it's not like i can get 300 physical defense by building four 70 defense items because there are only two so i, I you know I, i'm limited physically on how much defense i can get and the that's good because with five items you would expect the power level of the whole game to be a little bit lower generally speaking and uh that's just not how it i'm just not it's not how it goes actually uh because all the people that do damage actually five item slots is fine because they all get a lot of damage the defense people building defense are the ones that are punished by this by this no sixth item slot because you generally speaking you know you have uh three fizz d and two magic d or something like that but those three fizz d the tankiest you can get out of three physical defense items is like 190 defense right it, or, or 200 defense plus your base defense puts you up to like 300 like you you don't have the option to like cap out obviously it's a diminishing return scale i could give you guys the the, the whole math behind it but that doesn't matter the point is that the tank items are not very good um the other issue that i personally have with the tank items is that about half the tank items give you free damage which i just think is really dumb i think that it makes it harder to balance the tank items for this reason is that if you make the tank items tanky and they still do damage now we're in a meta where tanks are the only thing that's playable because they're unkillable and they do too much damage right so I, like personally as a tank i would rather be tanky than be able to actually kill someone right like that's not that's not always my job right I, zoning someone out of a fight is different than killing them it's it's not the same thing if i build crystalline curious and uh tainted guard and fire blossom and flux matrix and i run at someone they kill themselves before i before they kill me right like that and i like if i pop thorns right they literally can kill themselves before i die and i don't have to hit them so it's just stuff like that that makes it it just feels a little wonky to me it just seems a little wrong to where tanks can do this much damage but they're not actually that tanky um and then if you make them tankier they're, they're op so hopefully that made sense that's just something that i know omada is looking into right they know they're looking into tanks and tank items and making tanks better uh, they're going to do a little like smite 9.5 thing is kind of what i'm assuming is going to happen but uh, i think along with that you need to look at nerfing tank damage because otherwise tanks are going to run rampant and number five this is the final one this one is a little bit different than the others because uh it's something that is more of omida and the community kind of kind of doing this thing that is I would love to see, and I, I think this is a slim chance, okay? I would love to see something like April Fools, you know, do something for April Fools or uh, do some more sort of event stuff. You know, we got Peppermint Kalari, right? We, you know, can we get uh, an America skin for 4th of July? Or can we get, a, you know, a beach skin for someone for the beginning of summer? Like, just, I know that the game's in early access and doing event stuff is not really uh, the top of the priority list, but it's just something that I think it would breathe a lot of life into the game uh, to to have stuff like that come out, right? They said they're going to be dropping skins and a bunch of the updates coming up. You know, I I'd love to see something like that. And on top of that, you know, obviously I'm recording this on the 30th of March, right? So two days before fourth or before April Fool's. Um, I'd love to see something for fourth for April fourth of July. I don't I don't know. Why I keep saying that. Uh, for April Fools, I would love to see something for April Fools. I don't know what it would be. Like I'm trying to think off the top of my head what what something funny would be that wouldn't be too gameplay breaking because you can't just do it like you know uh, in Smite you could do April Fools in Arena right and then not do nothing in in Conquest and it doesn't affect it. 
but in this game obviously there's only one q i would love to see something like uh you know fang tooth has googly eyes on it or uh the river buffs that spawn actually give you a different color buff when you kill them right so they're like literally random a green buff spawns you kill it gives you a gray buff right something like that you know uh that's just like like kind of funny like some funny things that can happen um through throughout a game i i just think you know it, again it would breathe life into the game that that's all i'm looking for here with this final one is sort of like what can omida do to interact with the community to bring more life more more whole like whole content to the game and uh, i i think there's a couple things they could do obviously i list a couple examples let me know what you guys think down below those are my top five things hopefully this was not too rambly not like hopefully it was somewhat coherent um I'm really tired, so like I, I don't know how much rambling I actually did. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, let me know down below. Let me know what you guys thought down below. Let me know, know like what do you guys want to see in season two? Uh, but that's all I've got for you guys. So as always, I've been Pinzo. This video's done Zo. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.